you'll learn how mosquitoes help detain thieves, why cows escape from reality, how zero gravity confuses cats, why people build houses full of holes, how to tie a snake in a knot, and a lot of other exciting stuff. Let's go. Imagine you go out onto the porch of your house and discover a dead snake with a body tied in a knot. You'd probably think that's a nasty prank, though sometimes snakes can really tie themselves into a knot they can't get out of. This is caused by a very rare condition called the inclusion body disease. That's sort of like the Ebola virus, but among snakes. In fact, this disease affects the entire body, including the central nervous system. Symptoms often progress rather quickly, and the snakes get disoriented. They twist, roll on their backs, holding their heads in an unnatural position, and tie themselves into knots. The condition is most commonly found in pythons and boa constrictors, that is, in snakes who strangle their prey. Inclusion body disease is always lethal, and there's no cure. At least so far, there seems to be none. But a snake tied into a knot isn't necessarily sick. If the reptile can get out of the knot, then everything's fine with it. Evolution made snakes like this, amazingly flexible and having full control over their muscles. Some snakes, especially boa constrictors and pythons, have more vertebrae per unit of body length than others. As a result, they can form any shapes they want, tie themselves into knots or get out of them, also when they want. Other snakes actually tie themselves into knots to shed their skin. Apparently, it's more common among sea snakes, because they simply don't have something to rub against. But there's another reason why healthy snakes can accidentally tie themselves into knots when they don't want to. Zero gravity. Snakes actually act rather weird in microgravity. They either attack themselves or coil themselves into a tight ball. It's believed that snakes simply lose awareness of their body parts in relation to one another. They no longer seem to know their own bodies from any other object nearby, like an obstacle, an enemy, or a member of the group, to which they can bunch up closer in a stressful situation. By the way, cats also perceive zero gravity in a special way. They think they're falling. And since cats try to land on their feet, they begin to twist in zero gravity to find where exactly they need to land. They know for sure that the ground is supposed to be below, not on the ceiling or somewhere on the side. The cat's innate sense of orientation in space can't be turned off, so they keep twisting and get very confused. But okay, let's be honest. Zero gravity can confuse anyone, especially if you don't understand exactly where you are and why. Though you don't need outer space to fool the cows, a VR headset will do. This technology was first used in Russia, but today it's also successfully applied in Turkey. The way it works is quite simple. Beautiful green pastures reduce cow stress levels, but you can't find them everywhere. So instead of real fields and lawns, animals enjoy virtual views, and it works. Turkish farmer Izik Kocak tested it on his cows. Each of them produces about six gallons of milk per day, but the cows who wore virtual reality headsets produced an average of seven gallons. That's a whole extra gallon, simply because animals began to experience less stress. By the way, that farmer also turns on classical music for his cows. Another way to pamper the cows is massage. Yes, cow massage. Of course, without massage tables or stuff like that, the farmers just set up automatic brush systems and the cows enjoy using them. After all, the dirt stuck to their bodies makes cows feel itchy. And don't forget about insect bites. Cows really want to rub against something. Without brushes, they can rub against some hard surfaces like trees and fences, and this isn't always safe. Brushes serve a number of purposes. They clean the skin, relieve itching, improve blood circulation, and relieve stress, making cows happy. As you already realize, this is really important for getting more milk. And now we've got some news from Steve. Mosquitoes help detain the thief. In June 2022 in Southeast China, a thief broke into an apartment through a balcony, stole some valuable items, and fled. However, during the theft, the criminal was bitten by two mosquitoes. The police later found the dead mosquitoes and traces of blood on the wall, allowing them to trace the thief using his DNA. Does this mean that we'll hate mosquitoes less because they help the police? Nah, bad chance. People might be able to breathe through their butt. Scientists discovered that pigs and mice have this ability. If you deprive them of oxygen, but supply it through the intestines, the animals will survive. So in theory, people can do this too. Yes, in theory. No one run any tests or look for test subjects, and actually, 
this is just an assumption of scientists. So let's just not try that, okay? Would you like this format? Steve always has lots of exciting news and he really wants to add this section to our videos. You know, there are things he simply has to share with you ASAP. Like this one. Scientists ate a 50,000 year old bison. They discovered it in Alaska and found that the muscle tissue was very well preserved. Apparently the bison froze almost immediately after death and part of it remained intact. The texture of its muscles was not unlike beef jerky. So why not make a stew from a prehistoric animal? Not from the entire bison, of course. It's a museum exhibit after all. But yeah, scientists actually cut off a chunk of meat from the neck of the ancient bison, added potatoes, carrots, garlic, onions, opened wine, and even survived that dinner. Honestly, I don't know what to say about this. I think I'm hungry. If you enjoyed this section, write, we want more news from Steve in the comments or something like that. If we get enough likes and comments, we'll share more news in our next video. In the meantime, back to the animals. After all, we are here for them. Did you know that in Iceland, horses type on giant keyboards? Not all of them, of course, but this is a really exciting fact. A survey conducted by Visit Iceland found that 55% of respondents check their email inbox at least once a day while on vacation. At the same time, about 60% say their managers were expecting a response despite the fact that they were on vacation. Perhaps you know this too well and think it's, shall we say, frustrating? In Iceland, they came up with a solution. Let horses reply to work emails instead of people. There are only three horses and each of them is trained to type. Of course, the result is gibberish and doesn't make any sense, but hey, what other response can you expect from a person on vacation? To let horses type, a giant keyboard is being created with wooden buttons the animals can walk on or hit with their hooves. Honestly, of the three horses, I like Litlishjarna the most. She's described as speedy but sleepy. Overall, this is a nice and cute initiative featuring horses. In the mid-1880s, people were tougher, so they came up with a different attraction, which fortunately is a thing of the past now. Back then, people thought it was fascinating when a horse dives into the water, sometimes from a height of 60 feet. A horse! It's not an otter, damn it! It's believed that the inventor of the attraction, William Carver, was crossing a bridge in 1881 when it partially collapsed. This man's horse fell, well, or dived into the water, but survived, and this story inspired him. He trained different animals, went on tour with them, but the horses were the undisputed stars of the show, horses that dived into the water from a great height. Luckily, animal rights activists showed up and the attraction was shut down. It's hard to imagine the stress the poor horses were under and the injuries they got. There are even some testimonies with details, but <sighs> enough about sad things. In the meantime, check out a helicopter elephant. Some argue that the legend of India's dancing elephant helicopters started in 1977 when the first of their kind took to the air. The exact date is hard to pinpoint, of course, but there were actual helicopters decorated with fabric and with attached elephant legs and trunks. A curious demonstration of military power and the strength of tradition. These people who scatter in different directions from nothing are actually fleeing from an invisible fire. I'm not kidding. They try to put it out using water, foam from a fire extinguisher. Seems like some guy was doused with water too. I bet in the Middle Ages this fire would be considered black magic and would cause panic. Though actually, this is the way methanol burns. That is, its flame is actually not invisible, it has a blue color, but it's simply impossible to see it in bright daylight. This is how the flame becomes invisible. Now pouring water onto nothing doesn't seem so weird. Luckily, the racer suits are strong enough to withstand the invisible flame. By the way, did you know that the safety gear of bike racers includes an airbag inside the jacket? Actually, this makes sense. Human life and health must be protected. But how can you do that when a biker almost always falls from the bike during an accident? This is why airbags are integrated into jackets and they absorb shocks, while at the same time stabilizing the body from head to tailbone. And since we're talking about cool devices, here you go, a portable fish tank. Have you always dreamed of walking your pet fish and showing them the city? Then this fish tank is just for you. Comfortable handle, durable glass or plastic or whatever it's made of. What do they usually say in commercials? Okay, actually this fish tank is for a different purpose. 
That is, people do carry fish in it, but not to walk them. The thing is, in Japan, where this portable fish tank was invented, people love fish and appreciate it when it's fresh. A live fish is as fresh as it gets. The device called the Katsugyo bag allows owners to show off expensive seafood brought from the market as they carry it home. A special sensor allows monitoring the saturation of water with oxygen, plus there's also a thermometer to know for sure that the fish is neither hot nor cold. True, I still didn't fully understand what the original idea was, make a carrier for beautiful aquarium fish or just a fridge for something that'll be your lunch in a couple of hours. Share your thoughts in the comments. Meanwhile in the UK, bee bricks have been invented. No, not like they're small, made of honey and painted black and yellow. No, these are regular sized bricks, but with several narrow holes in them that make the bricks look like pieces of cheese. Solitary bees prefer to nest in these holes, and bricks give them this opportunity. The goal is to increase opportunities for biodiversity. As solitary bees make up nearly 250 of the UK's approximately 270 bee species, they play a really important role in the ecosystem. Then there's a logical question. How did these bees cope before people invented bricks with holes? Here's the answer. For hundreds of years, insects nested in crumbling mortar and old brickwork. The problem is that modern buildings are so perfect, there are no suitable cavities in the walls. In order not to leave the bees homeless, they began producing special bricks. $36 each, by the way. Anyone can buy them, but in Brighton and Hove, bee bricks have already become a planning requirement for buildings higher than 16 feet. These buildings should also include bird nesting boxes suitable for swifts. But that's another story. Actually, creating or maintaining suitable environment for bees is a very cool idea. Here, for example, when mowing the lawn, they left wildflowers so that the bees could use them. Looks good? Yeah, that's also sort of nice. So, mosquito patties. Would you dare taste something like that? This may seem like a real test for the stomach, but people living on the shores of Lake Victoria in Africa eat such patties every year. There's a simple reason this food exists. During the rainy season, trillions of mosquitoes rise from the water and fly in giant flocks. Imagine going outside and seeing a sky full of mosquitoes. Ew! Though it makes catching mosquitoes in large numbers fairly easy, it's enough just to swing your bucket. Locals catch them, make patties, fry them, and eat them like burgers. One such patty, which looks very burnt, can contain between 300,000 and 500,000 mosquitoes, and the amount of protein in it is seven times higher compared to beef patties. I don't know exactly what this patty tastes like, but mosquito patties help locals fight insects, get food during years when food is scarce, and attract tourists. Seriously. It's a mosquito burger! Of course, you'd be excited to at least see it. Oh, and by the way, most of these mosquitoes don't suck blood, but they still bite, so I wouldn't feel sorry for them. Though I do feel sorry for a golden retriever named Wesley who had to wear braces. Braces might be challenging. I know what I'm talking about. When Wesley's teeth came in, they grew so crookedly that the puppy could neither close his mouth nor eat normally. Turns out the dogs have such problems too, but Wesley is lucky because his owner is a dog dentist. I'll give you a couple seconds to realize this is an actual job. So the owner came to the rescue and fit the pup with braces. Yes, it appears dogs wear them too. I even found several other stories like that. Moreover, according to the owner, Wesley was just happy when it happened. Well. I don't know. My experience taught me it hurts, and I had to eat only soft food for a couple of weeks. However, it seems like dogs don't have to wear braces for years to correct their bite. Wesley should only have them for a few weeks. Seriously, dog braces are one of the most unexpected things for me in this video. But what about elephant seals helping scientists map the ocean? Something like the guys from Google who drive everywhere with cameras filming the streets? Only the elephant seals have no idea what they're doing, and they hardly get paid. Until recently, C4 maps weren't very accurate when it came to the Southern Ocean. Remember where that is? 
We're talking about the southern parts of the Pacific, Atlantic, and Indian Ocean surrounding Antarctica. But sometimes they're combined into one ocean. So it was quite difficult to study it until scientists employed elephant seals. Nearly 300 of them have been turned into many submarines when scientists attach satellite tracking devices on their heads, making the elephant seals look like unicorns. Every few seconds, their movements and depth were recorded and then sent to scientists via satellite. Some elephant seals have been found to dive for more than an hour and a half and to a depth of almost 1.5 miles below the ocean surface. So with their help, it was possible to map the seabed and at the same time learn more about the elephant seals themselves. And don't worry, the sensors fell off painlessly when the elephant seals molted. Okay, it looks like lizards do have a third eye. It's also found in frogs, salamanders, certain bony fish, sharks, lampreys. But why haven't we heard anything about it yet? Well, the thing is, the third eye's not like the other two. It's much smaller, can't see or blink, but has a very important function. The third eye senses light intensity and is connected to the pineal gland, which regulates the circadian rhythmicity and produces hormones for thermoregulation. In fact, this eye is part of the epithalamus, that is, a piece of the brain, and the brain can't stay outside, so it's always covered by skin. The third eye also works like a built-in sun-calibrated compass. It helps animals find their way even when they have no reference points at all. In any case, this is true for lizards. No tests have been yet carried out with frogs. Though we know exactly what happens if the frog sits on a working fan, and it looks creepy, like a scene from a movie about ancient Egyptian curses or something. Apparently, the frog fell on the fan, was then pinned by a stream of air, and well, it dried up until it resembled a mummy. There's a logical explanation to that if you know how frogs and fans work. Some frog species lose water through their skin very easily, so they dry out quickly unless they swim or take shelter in some damp, dark, wind-sheltered place with less evaporation. Others even dig into the ground to reduce water loss. In short, moisture is what sustains frogs. At the same time, the fan is a device literally designed to create wind that will evaporate excess moisture. Fans are made to act like frog-killing devices. Well, not on purpose, of course. But it's clear why the poor creatures die when they find themselves on a fan. Evolution clearly didn't anticipate this. Maybe in a few thousand years, frogs will find a way to deal with that, but not today. So far, some species have simply invented moisturizer. Moreover, unlike people, frogs don't need to buy it, make it, or even go somewhere to get it. Because frog moisturizer is inside the frog. At least when it comes to the waxy monkey leaf frog. This frog can survive even at 104 degrees Fahrenheit all thanks to the ability to control the loss of water during evaporation. The frog collects waxy secretions from its neck and rubs them all over its body with its legs. This prevents the skin from drying out in the sun, even if the temperature gets really uncomfortable. Really, I wouldn't be surprised if that frog handles the hot weather better than me. I think I'm starting to fall apart at 104 degrees Fahrenheit. Though for some animals, falling apart is normal. Have you ever seen turtle shed? This is literally what it looks like. A turtle shell is made up of roughly 60 bones. The bony shell is covered with a thin layer of epithelium, which forms hard outer scutes. The turtle grows, and new scutes of a larger diameter grow under the old ones. And this is how the shell expands. In many species, the old scutes remain on the shell for life, making it more durable. At the same time, water turtles shed the excess once a year so that a heavy shell doesn't make swimming hard. And since we're talking about the water creatures, meet the water scavenger beetle. The beetles of this family live in water, and for some reason, some of them live in manure and rotting leaves. They're probably not the favorite family members, but we're interested in those who prefer to swim. Actually, small insects have a rather peculiar attitude to water. Think of the water strider. Surface tension allows it to slide along the surface of still water. Water scavenger beetles do something similar, but from the other side. Yes, they run on the surface of the water from under the water. 
scientists discovered this strange way of moving not so long ago. The article about the study was first published in June 2021. The discovery was made when behavioral biologist John Gould was looking for tadpoles and suddenly spotted a beetle in the water. At first, the scientist thought that it just fell into the pond and floated on the surface, but he suddenly realized that the beetle was upside down and was under the surface of the water. And it was moving, not swimming, but crawling, as if it were not the border between water and air, but the surface of some table. Overall, that's quite a cool discovery, which proves the world is still full of exciting things. See you later.